Hello everybody, Anton is here. In this tutorial slash time lapse, I will talk about how I made this gun. And this gun was fully made inside uh, 3D code and rendered in Keyshot. And this this variant was done in the first uh, part of like not first part of the first couple hours. And then I did an extra modification that I think I like more, but both have uh, some ideas going through. Here I'm inside 3D code itself with the final finish gun. So I've got some mechanical moving parts like I've got the stove, it's locked. We can lock in, lock out. We've got the bolt recharging handle, which is which was hidden for no reason. All the sides and magazines and all that stuff. Uh, the important part of it was that I actually took an existing gun, it's is uh, Heckler & Koch MP7, and I decided to restyle and make uh, a gun uh, on top of it. And something that I use a lot for the reference was this uh, game, educational game called uh, World of Guns. It's way better than what you can find on YouTube or on or online, you know. Because what you can actually see, you can see all the stuff, how it's all working and moving. And I, I had this whole separate video about this particular game. Because you can find and you can see the whole thing, how it moves in slow motion and just you can you can check the parts names, everything. It's really really cool. No, and I'm not sponsored by all of the guns. Uh, it's actually spent like sixty dollars on this game. Uh, you get some free guns uh, if you download it, but uh, I wanted to unlock all of them uh, to check different versions, uh, different models. That's why I bought it. And it was really, really important. I'll put a link in the description. You can get it on Steam. Also, I'll bring my apologies. The something happened with the audio at one point, and there are a few parts of the video where I had to turn it off. I generally just ramble over the video, just sharing my ideas and how it all looked. Uh, so it's not that important, that stuff that's been lost. And I hopefully, uh, I'm not sure if I cleaned out all the audio parts that were noisy, but hopefully I did. And apologies if you get into the noisy patch. Alright, let's get started. Right, here we go. Start with the box and I put in the correct measurements of the gun, uh, like 17 uh, centimeters in length and uh, four and, and other ones. Just found it on Wikipedia, really. Uh, so it might be this box, and this box is crucial, really. You really need to get the right measurements there. So I have this, uh, I made a silhouette cut out in Photoshop, just black. I found the photo, I made it just white, black and white. And then I use the stencil to cut out the gun. Again, keep it right, uh, you know, to have the right base to start with. And you can see that though I used the correct dimensions, the width was way too wide. Uh, and it's, I think, because it's just measured by the thickest part of the gun, and that thickest part of the gun was like five centimeters in width, which would be way too much. So I decided to just eyeball the width correctly. All right, so here I've got the lay of about uh, 100,000 voxels. I start then to uh, to really uh, clean up the silhouette. Uh, here I was just more like doing this, thinking about what I want to do at all, what kind of design I want to make, what's going to work, what's not. So this this like a pre preliminary step and uh, you're not too sure what you're gonna do right so continuing to clean up so th this part I think I wanted to figure out some major parts of the gun uh, that I could cut out I split out split in the parts so press so made the uh, made the cut out using the spline tool 
cut it out because this nice shape with a bit of curvature and um, no rectangular lines. Right, doing the same thing for the handle. And the handle seemed to be a bit too thick, so I decided to make it thinner. Right, trying to find the right shape. And I think I made the handle a little bit too short in the end. I mean, it should have been a little bit longer, but uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you would see me later, uh, more at the end of the video, I'll go try to tweak it. I'm just trying to use the move tool to move the stuff around, get the point to seal it. Soften this up uh, and yeah, make it longer. Right, so I've got this buttstock. Just keep on cleaning. Right, and I want to do the trigger frame. I know it's a handle, so I'll cut out the handle. And the trigger. Uh, so doing some doing some stuff on the parts of the which I'm not going to use at all anyway, but I don't know. Just, uh, like I guess I'd feel nicer when I have a tidy silhouette. And uh, that was the aim for the start with, uh, just to make a tidy, clean silhouette. You see here I'm using a, a material with the semi-transparent parameters. It's half transparent. You have to create the material yourself. I think I'll do a separate video about it, but it's pretty straightforward to create. A, you can start with a new refractive material that it's and you can find it in the, in the tab. Then you <coughs> just adjust the refractive material to be just transparent. And then you can have a semi-transparent material that's, you no, know, you can use as a see-through to do cuts. All right, so here I'm doing the, trying to find a nice hole for the for the trigger frame. All right, did a cut. I think I'll redo this frame a few times. Maybe not. I know. So. Oh yeah. So essentially, what I did, I uh, scaled the sketch up. I scaled the splines up and then I did another cut to cut out uh, to make the whole shape like a thin round frame. Right, just adding unhiding stuff. Man, when I speed it up, it looks so much better. Like so easy. Ah, in real time, it took like uh, eight, nine hours. I'm trying to recreate something here. I'm not sure what I want to do. Oh yeah, I'm doing the trigger. Yep. Uh, I would so I would do that and then drop it to uniform space, and sometimes it would get this huge count, uh, voxel count, like like uh, one million uh, voxels on one simple part, which I need to down sample later. Don't, and I did that on a trigger. So now I am trying, I'm not sure what I'm trying to do. Well, like looking for frame design really. Thinking where my element's gonna be.
Some modern appliances, the doublet style, you know, like rectangular squares and, and circles. Now, really unitary functional design that doesn't have any anything extra to it. This particular part is uh, is the piece that like a bumper. So if the, the shells are getting out of the I don't know the port. Uh, when the shells go well, when the shells go out of the extraction port they hit that gray bumper and they don't fly in your face and i seen it happening on a youtube video which i watched as well when people sh shoot from the mp7 it's pretty <clears throat> pretty good functional piece it's not a movable button as in my look at the moment so I'm trying to reuse it again, and I wanted to reuse it as. Um... Oh yeah, just uh, as a safety button. So for now, I did the right thing here. I didn't try to you know detail the safety button and just use it as a rectangular piece. But... And I will add the detailing of the safety button really pretty much at the end when I started to detail everything. But here you can see more or less uh, the look I decided to go with. It's more of, um, pretty close to the final design in major shapes. And I'm trying to do something here, not sure what. Hiding and, and hiding something. Yeah, I was trying some shapes here and there. I uh, did the eyeball, the the barrel. I actually later I just found the dimensions for the barrel as they should be, and it's like okay, that's nine millimeter bullet, so it's nine millimeter barrel. Uh, and uh, 3D code being awesome as it is, it shows you the actual dimensions every time you do anything. So I, later on, I, I did the proper bullet hole that's uh, you know nine millimeter bullet hole inside the barrel. All right, tried to merge this bit together, and I just couldn't. It was just a leftover bit that I wanted to get rid of, that middle uh, stripe in the mainframe. So I'm just trying different... Uh, right now I'm trying to do some adjustments to the overall shape. I think I didn't look that uh, the gun almost was almost symmetrical, right? So the if you look at the handle, then the right part is like half of the gun. You know, it's like... Uh, the volume on the left and right side are all, all same in the distribution, and I didn't like that. I'm not sure if I can explain it better. I was just looking too symmetrical. In the end, I just shortened the gun a little bit on the left side. That probably happen. Gonna probably happen right now. Maybe later. All right, and you'll start seeing my computer to freeze out quite a few times. I'm not sure what was happening there. It's something that happened with the code and recording software running. Really peculiar stuff. Uh, looked like a RAM issue, but I've just updated. I've just upgraded my RAM. Might be video cuts or something. Right, still doing the bot stock. I think the bot stock was one of the things that I hardly changed at all. It was 
really uh, kind of successful part of the design, which I done and just forgotten about. Uh, there are a few parts that they really modified a lot. That was the front piece, and you'll see me working on it a lot. Like uh, the buttstock was probably the most successful design in terms of doing it and forgetting about it. So yeah, looking at the Mac, did some stuff on Mac, and uh, just doing the bumper, that little thing. Uh, actually, at that time, I didn't check. I thought it was actually, you know, a button at the time. I thought you could recharge the bolt, dragging that button, like on some guns, uh, I think. But then I checked that it's actually part of the frame. It's not a movable piece. Right, so I'm doing some insights of the of that silencer. Now this kind of piece, this uh, silencer, inside silencer, something that I start to see common when people doing these uh, you know, futuristic gun designs, and it kind of looks cool. So, looks cool, kind of functional. Uh, possible this present level of technology so like yeah I'll do that you see I've just shot in the gun right here it's a pretty important bit I decided to shoot on it at, at least a little bit from the left side uh, I also know what's happening on in the back side it, essentially the trigger group is there at the bottom then there's uh, empty space there for the bolt to go and bounce so there is a buffer there to you know, bounce the bolt and a you know, couple, couple of sprints and all that right so decided to add some color to that I was, at one point I just really wanted to add some kind of tiny color um, touches so I decided to add at least that little bit of red color I don't write pink, pink. Change it to red later. Oh yeah, this one is actually really interesting. I'm doing the buttstock, right? And I wanted to... And uh, this is one of the really awesome features of 3D code. The, the the fact that they can change the symmetry all around and you can modify it. So I I have the whole buttstock there, but I want just to edit the pattern in, in front. So pick the symmetry, put the symmetry in the center of that particular piece, and then turn on the Z, uh, X and Y symmetries. So I... Uh, then I started to unhide the pattern from the inside. So again, dealing with the symmetries, picking the symmetry point and activating a whole bunch of side planes. Uh, okay, that, that, that piece I changed a few times later, but uh, okay, it's fine. You know, the bus stop piece. Yeah, that was the only part that I think I changed that much. It was the inside frame. Alright, so here I'm doing the Picadini rail. I'm doing it pretty true to dimensions. So I was trying to... I wanted to get 5mm parts there. So there's a five millimeter gap um, across a uh, bit in between these uh, like rails, smaller bumps. I decided to combine these two pieces together. So uh, <coughs> essentially, what I did, I cut out the middle, split them in two, and then joined them all together. Uh, it's kind of funny that it's getting a bit jerky right now. I think I got in the mood to be a bit more, to go and do more stuff. Uh, once I kind of figure out the proportions and major elements, uh, I was uh, 
I felt a bit more freedom about moving moving forward and adding and adding and the subtracting detail. All right, so I'm doing the rear side. And rear side is really the copy of the existing side that I found on the MP7. I started a few and uh, looked for some details, but really, damn, it's gone really fast. I found a few uh, sites on the Google, but I decided to stick to the existing one. It looks pretty good good enough and I was like saying that this was the most joyful part of the gun design I think it was so easy to just for, create an existing piece uh, that's uh, I already have a, uh, I can already check in real life no much thinking required I did only like a couple things that were out of the ordinary, like that circle on top, I just put it there randomly and it looked pretty cool. Right, so I'm doing these parts, reflective parts there. You'll see me, uh, and I'm, uh, you'll see me turning on the depths quite often. I use it really often because I don't like when it cuts through the whole mesh, right? I do tend to forget all the time that I have the depths on. I wish there was some kind of sign that would be like a really bright flashing sign that says that I've got the depths on when I split or hide some stuff. Because uh, you'll see me doing it so often, like uh, turning depths on and off and then forgetting that it's on. <clears throat> so I was here I was trying to, I wanted to add that, you know, ripped part of the um, of the thing so in the end of the day I decided just to use the symmetry and cut through and make that circle I really don't know how you call the surface honestly I mean, on the adjustment circle uh, adjustment thing okay so here I'm I want to add the bolts and you can see me actually adding the bolts right in the proper gap now that's going pretty nitty there some so details so yeah just trying to get the proper bolt shape and i guess it turned out to be harder than i thought i think that there was a lot due to the resolution of the bolt i had to check up the resolution this uh, this particular element is right thirty thousand. Right now, you can see that the bottom, I had to jack it up probably to like 300,000 for, for that little piece, which is really a lot. But yeah, that's a problem with voxels. Some stuff you have to really, sometimes you have to really increase the resolution on smaller parts. And there was something that I didn't like about that part. I don't know what. But all right. Uh, uh, there is actually a problem with 3D code that when you click Alt on a layer, you isolate everything by that layer, but then you want to, but then it sometimes forgets that you isolated that only object. And what happens is that you have to unhide everything. And you know, because I have so many backup layers that when I unhide everything, uh, all the backup layers unhide, so I have to go back and hide them. As a persistent problem that I uh, have when I isolate something, then cannot back, cannot come back from isolation, and I have to unhide the whole stack. Uh, persistent problem. Hopefully, going to be fixed one day. Yeah, I should really talk about. I should really mention about it on the forum. That isolation is not working properly. Right, so I'm doing one of the major things uh, where I decided that okay, I'm happy with the body of the gun, which was a big milestone. And I decided to cut out the body parts, like body frame parts. 
Oh yeah, you got tired of the orange shade that was applying to every new part. And then selected uh, black material as my default shader. And here you can see the depth was on, so when I split the body, it actually only split it into really thin, fine slices. So I had to redo the body splits again. And the issue with that is sometimes when you run with a really high pole count, your undo history starts to diminish, and maybe your, your memory only saves like two or three undo moves. And therefore, sometimes you run out of undos, and that's a big, can be a huge problem. Uh, the best fix I found is to restart my computer and free the cache. So we have more undos that can be saved. But I'm uh, just talking about that sometimes you make something like uh, forget to turn off the depths on your split tool or high tool, and then you go on and go back and undo, and it turns out that you have to actually go to autosave because you cannot change much. But autosave is pretty good, though. At least that I can say is autosave is all right, works pretty well. Saved me, saved me a lot of time and frustration. Saves about every five minutes. Good enough. Again, so I'm doing the front side. But again, I, I know how all those sides work and what you need to rotate on to get it right. It's a pretty peculiar little side. So, and the... All right. I'm just borrowing some parts from the rear side, front side. I like with the bolt. I reused the bolt all over the gun. I'm just trying to get the proper hole. And quite often I do the hole and I see that I don't have enough resolution for that hole, so I have to undo it. Then I up the resolution of the whole mesh and then I do the hole again and then I can do it out again and you'll see me doing it pretty pretty often like going back and forward back and forth all right just trying to get I wanted to get a cylinder down so I duplicated the part then I just cut it out to make it a cylinder Yeah, I was really, I was really enjoying doing this. That's why I'm adding all the spots that probably will never be visible. Okay, this was supposed to be my. I decided to do it as a laser sight. That's in front of the the gun, so you can uh, plug it in from the front in a, on a rail. Check it in. Oh, yeah, I'm trying to figure out what what I was thinking about here. Not sure. Not sure. Stabilizing on the model really thinking what can could be done all right and this was one of the cooler parts i think i did uh it was so that particular part the trigger group trigger the trigger mechanism is kind of is there in that part of the gun so i decided to just go a little bit creative and add some depth to that part bottom of the butt so those those two rods that black rod is like uh, go, will be used to pull the butt stock from the inside and then I, I did the cut uh, that I was happy about it uh, the top 
cut there. And now I'm editing the I'm editing the front piece. I'm trying to figure out the right size for the uh, for the front piece. I did that little thing that I eventually <coughs> kind of looks cool, that uh, kind of hook in front. Uh, it didn't stay for too long though. I did remove it in the end. Alright, so it's in the compartment for the <coughs> now for the silencer. So I put that black circle, I didn't know what to do with the front at that particular moment. And then I decided to put a muzzle brake in front and I removed that uh, circle, uh, circular element in front. But, you know, at the time I was thinking about <coughs> reusing it. Not reusing, using it. I think it crashed here again and you'll see me trying to re uh, like save then close it and restart Go back. okay I'm doing some uh, buttstock style right now I think uh, this is where I decided to finalize the buttstock oh yeah so actually I lost that pattern that I was doing before but also I found a really cool photo of uh, Bustock where it had the ribs and could be going pretty deep. Uh, and that's what I decided to do. I decided to do a really uh, a deeper pattern. And you can see that I, I hidden volume, then I figure out that actually I didn't have enough resolution. So I had unhide everything, up the resolution, hide it again, and then edit the whole thing. So though I was looking for the housing for the for like the faults. Those uh, look good enough. And here I just want to add some pattern, I think. Oh yeah, I was thinking about adding some pattern inside that thing. Tried few ideas. I think I just decided to keep it simple in the end. And without anything inside. I decided to cut that silencer to make it a bit more interesting shape. Not just a circular uh, cylinder, but you know, the cylinder is a cut. I did some t smaller details to make it a bit more fun, but I think I removed it later anyway. Certain stuff that you can add with the texture and you should add with the texture. And I'm doing everything with geometry, it's not always feasible. I was thinking about adding small, small like color things. Are easy to do the texture. But because it wasn't supposed to be a properly baked model into a low point or anything, I really wanted to do everything with the geometry. I'm right, just doing a cut in front. And here I was thinking about more interesting shapes to do. Uh, because rectangular cut <clears throat> for the frame didn't look good. Uh, rectangular split. So I decided to figure out a way to do a more interesting cut. And it 
to kind of influence the whole thing quite a bit later on. In this particular card I'll show later. So kinda of like the kind of looked in small holes uh, <coughs> still say that it was really the right time to add some small details but you know hard, because it's so easy to do in, inside three codes hard not to add something small and tiny just for the fun of it while you're in the moment Yeah, I spent a lot of time thinking about this part, how to approach the uh, barrel and So you can see I did the split with the thickness, uh, with the depth on, that's why I got it quite nice. I did some tiny details there. I wanted to get a shape of back of the buttstock, so I did a cut of the back. And here I wanted to find some cool pattern that could put on the buttstock, you know. I wanted to add these kind of diamonds. Uh, it doesn't, the code doesn't allow you to stamp the stencil at 45 degrees, so I was like, I was, a, I think it crashed there. <laughs> okay, reload. That's a stamp at 45 degrees, it snaps at 30, 60 degrees, so I had to. I ball it for 45 and then I do the unhide, I mean hide, uh, hit the whole thing and hit, in the, and hit the bit. I got this particular pattern and uh, I wasn't really happy, I wasn't that happy about it. I was, I wanted to add a, like a border around it and I'd around the whole surface. I didn't know how to do it properly. I mean, there were a couple ways of doing it, but I was looking for the fastest way uh, there, right? Applying the pattern, then unhiding everything else. So uh, I hid the stuff, I didn't want to be affected by the pattern, then I decided to unhide everything else. But you can see it didn't look that good. You know, I kept being unhappy. So I would actually redo everything back, back, back. And I did something that I liked. I did this noise pattern. And noise, I really like the noise. Looked quite nice, looks like something one would do. And then you can, you know, you hide the noise and you unhide the parts and you can get a really oh, cool stuff there because uh, you, can, you can clean the pattern pretty easily by just clean the noise by just hiding the, uh, the parts here and there, bits here and there. So quite often the bot stocks that
Right. Oh yeah, here I wanted to add a... Most likely what I'm going to do... Well, I added a bit more intricate shape for the trigger frame. Uh, that shape is kind of housing the uh, the button for the magazine release. So I'm just I'll just do the button right now. Yeah, simple shapes just <coughs> hiding and hiding. Again, all those elements are extremely easy to do when you have the mage body ready and in place. Just adding a hole for the trigger. Inside the trigger frame and just playing around with the right measurements for the trigger, um, uh, for the magazine release button. I was trying to find a more kind of bit more entertaining shape for the trigger, but I think I haven't I pretty much had it really simple in the end. I'm fiddling around with the shape of the laser side, just trying to decide how close I want to keep it to the to the body. Considering that it's like screwed onto the Picatinny rail. And... Right, so I added that little piece uh, for the laser side, the glass piece. So I decided to add some kind of patterns to the to the silencer. Decided to use the 2D snapping grid. The fixed depths. I was trying to figure out the better, uh, better space in, in between. And that was all right. I wanted to do some uh, kind of intricate piece uh, up front for like, holding the barrel. And again, I isolated that piece, then I had to unhide everything, and what happened is unheed the whole thing, and I had to hide everything else really annoying and it's really cold I wanted to add a kind of metallic rim around that piece, just for extra decoration. Uh, I tried a few ideas, never really got a one that I liked. So it kind of looks alright, probably, uh, maybe I could have kept that, just an extra bright thing on the black metallic body. I just modified the part for the bolt recharge. I don't remember how to call it properly.
Yeah, some bits and pieces, it's kind of decoration for the guy. Give a look at patterns and see what works, what's not. Yeah, I can sp spend a bit too much time on these little things. I mean, it's not that important how they look. But sometimes I just get caught up and I try to get it just right. Okay, I'm adding a button. Like, see on on turn off button. Uh, for the laser side, I oh, know I'm actually adding the bolt screws. So I'm trying to line it up so that's like in line with the actual gaps on the Picatinny rail. Adding the button. I'm you know, using the split tool, adding this uh, with the depths, creating the small button, then cutting the part of it. It's kind of symmetrical, it doesn't have to be, but you know. Thinking about some decoration part on the laser side. Decided just to do the rectangular parts. Yeah, I like those insertions, so I started to do them all around. Right, uh, adding a bad trigger button. Or maybe some compartment that you know, can replace something inside that. Okay, so I was thinking about the shape, rectangular or, or round. If it's a rectangular, how big should it be? I'm fixing that part by symmetry copy, I'm fixing that artifact. Yeah, it's and all right, I'm going to the silencer. Right, here I wanted to add the pins uh, for gun assembly and disassembly. And they caused me some issue in future, essentially. What happened, I think, by some strange uh, stuff, they became extremely, extremely dense, like uh, one, million, <laughs> 1 million voxels per one. Uh, pain, it was ridiculous. But right now, I don't have any issues with that. I'm just doing the pain, trying to place the circle right. And so later on, I'll merge this uh, like like outer pain shell with body. And uh, I think I crashed here. Oh yeah, okay, finally that moment where I decided to organize all this stuff because it was just, I was getting mad with all this mess. Man, I was, because it was getting a bit slower. I meant that I had to isolate the parts more frequent. And you know, because it's pretty cool, got this issue with isolation when it hides everything and you have to unhide everything. I decided that I just need to do a manual uh, like isolation just by breaking the body into a bunch of main parts like butt stock, front side, rear side, uh, main frame, front frame, handle. Uh, by putting them all together in those groups, then I can just hide them quickly. So I'll have only five, six groups which I can hide. And 
I don't have to use isolation uh, alt alt isolation uh, function that often. And I'm using my script here, which I had a separate video about. Uh, let's rename the script. It is fairly important to rename that script prop. Uh, thing is, when you have a layer, even when you like divide your stuff in different groups, five or six, it's really easy to get lost and not to know in which particular group you are in. Like, are you inside the rear side or are you inside the handle group? So it's it's a good idea to run a script that renames all your layers uh, to the, by the group name. Oh, here, by the way, I'm doing the uh, uh, recharge and bolt thing. Uh, <coughs> I added the rods so I can move this thing in and out. Anyway, so I was talking about the layers. When it, if you rename the whole group, by the layer name, it will uh, it will be much easier to find. Uh, it will be much easier to understand in what particular group you are in. You just uh, you just try that script. It's free. It's in my video, in my previous video, and you'll see what I'm talking about. And yeah, definitely, definitely, my life make made my life a lot, a lot easier when I everything together if the script doesn't run well just rearrange the list or re rename the list I don't know why that doesn't work all, all the time but sometimes it it's a bit funny how it does it. a super simple script but quite useful well a, a, a video is called batch layer renaming on my channel. And you know, you just go to this description of the video and you'll find the link to the script. So I'm trying to rename it right now, and it's not doing the renaming correctly. So I'm rearranging the um, sounds. Finally, it ran through properly. So yeah, just picking every uh, every part, <coughs> checking that everything correct, that I'm deleting every unused layer, and running the script. I also need to, uh, uh, you know, parent all my layers to ungroup all the inside layers and parent them to the main layer. It, it, well, it's uh, easier to see the video. It's like two minute video. They talk about how you need to approach the script. So yeah, he, doing the buttstock uh, rods here. All right. I will quite often use the hotkey control. Um, I think it's my hotkey that I put, but uh, unhide everything in the subtree. Uh, if you right click on the layer, you can find the option. So I would hide everything and unhide one particular group. All right, I decided to add the picketing rail to the bottle. Right, I'm positioning my uh, pins, uh, third pin. 
The MP7 actually hold is held by two pins. Uh, what? Sorry, the extra pin kind of looks cool. I wanted to do something about the trigger and make it more exciting. But then it kind of didn't look that exciting. So I played around with it. And just dropped the idea. Alright, this was one of the like random moments when I uh, I hit the front frame and I really like the look of the rounded insides. So I really like how it looked. Looked a bit more interesting, a bit more modern. Uh, and I decided to actually keep that rounded look. So I scaled up the whole thing and deleted everything else. Right. So uh, right now I'm trying to hide <clears throat> the back point. So selected that back part and then I uh, aimed from the front to with shift hide tool and I hit that part to match the front part. Right, just trying to scale it so to fill the gap in between the parts, uh, main frame and fri front frame. And you can see the layer name, so if I like a little bit lost with uh, names of what I mean when I say certain parts, you can check on my right panel. So here I decided to modify the handle, so I'm using the line tool and I'm Oh, press and enter, getting those lines in and then press and enter a few times. To get it more rounded. Still kind of rounded the whole thing, so here when you round the whole thing you have to, un then you have to go and cut the bottom and up parts. Clean it up. I'm cutting out that particular thing is usually part of the magazine. Uh, it snaps in, just prevents it to go any further up. Just trying to figure out the better design of the handle. Took me some time, so try different patterns. Here I didn't like that the line went all the way up the handle into the body, so I decided to stop the line at the top. Right, you can see here, like the same pattern, but it's got it's different top. And then I felt there was not enough precision and more than those lines they were a little bit off to each other the left and right segment so i decided i'd have to use the spline tool to get the precision because you can snap the spline tool using shift i mean you can snap the points using shift relevant to each other aligning them to each other and i was also thinking about if um, if it may, makes sense they had a bit of a bend and the cool thing about those uh, splines, you can actually save them out, and I did that. I saved it out, uh, that spline, so I won't have to redo it a few times. And I loaded it up, you can see I've just, just done that. I'll try a different idea. I'm just trying to see if, the, both, if, if both rounded parts would look good, and they didn't look good, well not to my taste at least, so I decided to undo it and again load the spline and I already saved it before so I press a pause and saved it
So I decided to keep it slightly rounded to the minimum and then add it in that particular part. <clears throat> the tricky part was about adding a, some kind of pattern. It's easier to add a pattern when you have the uh, just a flat surface like I had in the buttstock. Uh, when you have it slightly curved, it get, gets way, way harder. Uh, to be honest, I think I still don't have a really good mythology, mythology to add a pattern to the whole surface. Really, I'd rather use a texture, to be honest. Uh, but again, because I'm doing everything with geometry, I, I limit myself to the geometry and geometry solutions, not, and not, not texturing solutions. You know, like adding, uh, I've added this ripped pattern, which is immense uh, in terms of poly count. So you can see those, this mesh is 12 million polygons. I mean, it looks really cool, but it's 12 million polygons for the, it's like half of the whole thing. So I was trying to combine it with the handle and they then I decided not to combine it. I was trying to lower down the poly count. Uh, but if I lowered it down to 3 million polygons, it's destroyed the whole thing. So I, in the end, I decided to keep it. I decided to always keep it hidden, so I would only use it for rendering. Then I tried. I also, but I also tried to see if I could just add a uh, noise pattern, and I added this pattern. Which, a broken uh, stone pattern which looks pretty cool but no. oh, uh, I had an issue that I'm not sure why but though the it's pretty dense mesh I couldn't really add that noisiness as I had on a buttstock so really the only reason why I didn't put the noise on the handle as I had it on a buttstock, buttstock was that because I couldn't find an easy way of doing it so I've tried a few solutions, they didn't work out, I'm like, oh, well, no. Because, I mean, it's here's sped up, but I spent like 15 minutes trying to find a solution, and it's like, it's a lot of time uh, for something that's not that important. And really, well, I still, because I was thinking about rendering it in Keyshot, I still can create a shade inside a Keyshot that will have a noise texture. I prefer, prefer to do everything inside, it's really cool to show you guys uh, how it's done, and not go for any third party tools but I mean that stuff is usually done within the texture anyway if you're talking about any kind of uh, production model movies or games doesn't matter it will be done with the, with the texture that's tiny bumps <laughs>